Yeah, buddy, we're home. So I just got back from a three-day trip to the coast. I had to go do some work. And one of the concerns whenever you're out and about doing stuff is backing up. I took my tablet, I took my, uh, my laptop, and I took my phone, and I even took my camera and took a bunch of pictures. And one thing that's always in the back of your mind when you're doing this is, how am I going to get all this backed up? And it's, it can be a big concern. And of course, you could take a flash drive and you could plug it into your laptop and you know you back your stuff up that way, but you have to do that manually. And uh, it's also kind of cumbersome to plug that into a phone, plug it into a tablet or, a, a, or, a, you know, or, or even a camera. And so um, I don't want to have to worry about that. When I'm traveling, I want to know if I'm creating documents or taking pictures or, or doing whatever, as soon as I'm done creating that, it's instantly backed up to my system here at home. And I don't even have to think about it. And I don't want to have to think about it. I'm too busy with what I'm doing off and about. So even if you're actually even just on vacation and you're, uh, you know, you've got your cell phone, you're taking tons of pictures, you don't want to have to worry about backing them up. You want to know that you can go about having fun and doing whatever and not have to worry about it. So let me show you how I can be out and about anywhere in the world doing anything and to know that no matter what I'm doing on my laptop, that as soon as I save a document or if I'm on my cell phone and as soon as I take a picture, I know that it's instantly saved here at home. All right, let me show you how I do it. So what we're going to do is install a program called SyncThing. Now I am on my desktop here, my Linux Mint desktop. And if I go to SyncThing, and it is right here, I've already installed it. Now, what is SyncThing? SyncThing is a free open source peer-to-peer -peer file synchronization tool. It lets me sync my files between devices uh, whether they're on my same local network or across the internet. So it, now it's not like cloud-based services like Dropbox or Google Drive because SyncThing doesn't rely on a central server. Uh, it, it's instead my devices communicate directly. So it keeps my data private and under my control. Now SyncThing is available for Linux, Windows, Macintosh, uh, it's for Android. And now for iOS, I I think for uh, iPhones, there may be a workaround. I don't think it's directly available through the store, but uh, I think there's a workaround. But here's the deal. I don't use Microsoft products and I don't use Apple products. And so none of my tutorials are going to involve them. So uh, whether or not it's available, you might have to kind of research that. And there, I think there might be a workaround for it, but you'll just have to figure that out if you're on, on Mac. But I'm on Linux. And I use uh, Android phone. And so, uh, you know, my tablet has Android. And so th that's all I use. And so this tutorial is going to be centered around that. So when I show you how to set this up, it may seem a little, a little complicated at first. But once you understand it, it'll, it'll click and you say, wow, okay, that's actually really simple to do. So let me walk you uh, systematically through the setup of sync thing. And I'm going to show you how uh, I sync my phone to my desktop and this system works for for any of them if you're if you're running a, a, a laptop or if you're running a tablet the system works exactly the same so once you learn how I set up my phone to sync to my desktop you'll understand how all of them work and it'll just click okay now we're going to go to our phone and install sync thing on our phone and now let's go back to the desktop now I'm not going to put sync thing down here on my panel because it's something that I don't run all the time. Whoops, i got to spell it correctly. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to run it right from here. Because I don't use this app. The app does everything for me. And so I just let this run all the time. And uh, yeah, I don't have to actually do anything with it. So I'm not going to waste the space on my panel. Okay, so now when you click on the icon for sync thing on the desktop. And you get this unable to connect. There might be a few things going on. Uh, first thing to check is maybe sync thing isn't running. Let's just go to a terminal and type sync thing. Let's try connecting again. And we hit refresh. And there we go. Okay, so now it's running. So the best way to prevent this from happening is to actually uh, add sync thing to my auto start apps. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's close this for a second here. And let's close that. 
And then we want to go to computer, our home. And then we want to go to config, the dot config folder. And then there's an auto start folder right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an entry here. So we're going to create a new document. We're going to call this sync thing dot desktop. And we're going to open it with text editor. And we're going to paste in this information here. Now I will have this in the description below. So you can just copy and paste it into your own document. Okay, so we have restarted the computer now. So here we are at the main user interface. Now you'll notice it says set user and password. Now uh, I'm the only one that uses this machine. And so I'm not going to worry about setting a, a password. But if you want to prevent others that are on this computer that I'm on right now, then you just go ahead and set it. But I'm just going to hit OK. And then we come to this screen right here. Now, over on the left, you'll notice it says folders. Now, this column here is the list of folders that I'm actually sharing on my desktop. And on the right is basically information about this desktop. And then down on the bottom right here, it says remote devices. This is where I add other machines, specifically where I'm going to add my phone. Okay, so you'll notice over here. Now, actually, what I did was I deleted the default folder. Uh, let me show you how that, let me create one here. There was a default folder here. So all you have to do is click on it and then click on edit and then remove. I did that and I didn't have my uh, screen recorder on. So anyways, I'm not sharing any folders on the left here. So now on the right, this device. You'll notice that right here it says identification. This is identification string. It only shows six letters, but it's actually much longer. If I click on that, you'll notice this is the identification right here. This is what identifies me uh, to my phone. And my phone has its own unique identifier as well. So what happens is, is when I want to talk to my phone, I need to tell my phone this num this bunch of strings here. Now, there's two ways I can do this. I could type all this in on my phone, but in a perfect world, what would be nice is if I could just take my phone and scan this QR code. The problem is, is that the official SyncThing Android app doesn't include a built-in QR code scanner anymore. It has something to do with Google Play policies or something. So I can't just scan it. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm not going to type in this big long string. So I'm going to go to my phone and I'm going to use a QR code scanner. So let's go to my phone and it's called QR and barcode scanner. And all I have to do is scan that on my desktop. And here it is. It, sh it shows it right there. So I just hit copy. Now it's copied to the clipboard. So when you first start up SyncThing, um, it, it doesn't look like the desktop app at all. So uh, if you want it to look like that, you just go over to the pancake menu right here and then click on Web GUI. So there you go. So now what we do is we go down to remote devices and I'm going to add the remote device. Now, see, sometimes when you add the device and you just click on it, it will actually find it. Uh, and so I'm on the same local area network. So it's right there. All I have to do is click on that. But if that wasn't there, which a lot of times it doesn't come up, I just have to paste in that ID like that. And then down here, device name. I'm going to call it Linux Mint Desktop. It would, it would help if I spelled it correctly. And then hit Save. And now back on the desktop, you'll notice it says device SMA156U wants to connect. Add new device. We're going to say yes, add device. And I'm going to call the device name my phone. Save. And now on the bottom right, you'll notice it says remote devices, phone. Now it says disconnected unused because I haven't shared anything yet. So that's typical. So now let's go back to the phone and tell the phone exactly what we want to share and send to this desktop. So we are on the phone here. And what we want to do is go to the top here where it says folders. And we want to add a folder to share. So if we click on add folder. Now, here's the deal. 
cell phones have this really strange way of naming its folder structure. So we go down here to this folder path. And <laughs> let's just, let's close this for a second. Let's go to the uh, file manager. Now I am in file manager plus. So I'm going to select the SD card because that's where all of my uh, pictures go. SD card. And then DCIM. And then you'll see where it says camera. 727 items. That's the folder I want to share. So I'm going to long press on that. Go down here to more and properties. So the location of that folder is storage slash nice. See, it's, just, it's ridiculously stupid the way they have this. Oh my goodness. It can't just say camera, can it? Uh, so that's what I need. So I'm going to long press on that path right there. And you want to make sure that you get that forward slash before. So it's forward slash storage. And I'm going to copy that. So I'm going to take this over and paste it into this add folder section. So I go to add folder. Uh, folder label. I'm just going to say pictures. I'll keep the ID the same. And then I'm going to back off that right there where it has that little tilde. And I'm going to paste in that path. Paste. And then save. Okay, so that folder has been added. So now we need to tell that pictures folder, hey, I want you to sync with a specific device. So we click on that. And that 10%, 12% that you see, it's just, it's just scanning it is all it's doing. It's not sending it anywhere. So then what we do is we clicked on it and we go down to edit. And then we want to go to sharing. When we go to sharing, you look down here where it says LM desktop. That's the device I want to share it with right there. So I click on that right there. And then uh, now there's some other options here like file versioning. Um, I'll explain that when I do a full tutorial on this. But for right now, I just uh, click on no file versioning. Uh, basically what that is, is that's how many times you want to have it stored before it deletes it. Uh, ignore patterns. We'll not, we'll not worry about that. So we're going to go to advanced. Now on advanced, you'll notice it says full rescan interval, 3,600 seconds. That's going to be one hour. So I'm going to back that off. And I'm going to change that to 1200. That's every 20 minutes. And then folder type, I'm going to change and uh, I'm going to say send only because I only want to send stuff. I don't need to receive anything from the desktop. I'm just sending it. And then down here, save. And now let's go back to the desktop again. And you'll notice on the desktop, it says phone wants to share folder pictures. Add new folder. I'm going to say add. And then I'm going to say, okay, now where am I going to put these? So on my desktop, I've created a folder called phone in my pictures folder. So what's going to happen is all of the stuff that gets sent from the phone is going to go right into that folder. Now, the path for that, if I just click on that folder up here in the um, path, I just click on that and I just right click and hit copy. That's the path for the phone pictures. Then I go down here and I paste it into here. So basically, I'm telling this uh, this part here, I'm saying, hey, look at whenever the, the, the phone sends me pictures, put it right in that location. I'm going to hit save. But before I do that, I'm going to go over here to advanced. And then where it says full scan, I'm going to rescan that 1200. That's every 20 minutes. And then the folder type, I'm going to hit receive only. So now what's happening is the phone is only going to send stuff. And the desktop is only going to receive. And I'm going to hit save. And then you'll watch it start scanning. So already right now, you'll notice that it says, look, you've got 6.7 gigabytes of stuff in that folder that's going to be sent. So then it'll start syncing right away. And there it is right there, already syncing to my desktop. And this would be happening no matter where in the world I was. Now, it may take a little bit of time for it to sync all that data. But once it's done, it won't do it all over again. It's going to, it's only going to do it incrementally. So whatever hasn't been backed up in the past. In other words, if I'm out traveling and I take a picture, boom, all it's going to do is send that one picture right to my desktop here. What's he doing? We, uh, we rescued him. He's, he's half blind. He can't hardly, <laughs> he's squinting to try to see me. He hears me, but he's not sure exactly where I am. I'm right here, buddy. Um, anyways, uh, that was uh, hopefully uh, uh, easy enough to understand about how SyncThing actually operates. It's really simple to do. Now, if you want to add more devices, um, all you have to do is just go to like the desktop 
and then just go to add device and then you can add your laptop you can add your uh, tablet and then just tell it each one of those devices what folder that you want to sync with the desktop and easy peasy now the now the caveat is is does that desktop have to be on yes it does but um, it, see my I've got a lot of other things going on and so that desktop acts as kind of a server as well so it serves a lot of other stuff and so um, I leave it on most of the time but uh, if I'm going to be traveling for a week or two then I, I don't leave it on I will shut it down um, and um, you see the thing about it is uh, sync thing will also work with a Synology NAS so I have it installed on my NAS as well um, I'm going to be doing a complete do tutorial on uh, on sync thing and I'll show you exactly how to install it onto a NAS if you have one of those um, I didn't show it today because that would be a lot more involved and I didn't want to just go through this big comprehensive um, instruction so uh, but anyways I hope that kind of gave you an idea exactly how the how the software works and how easy it really is and I've been using it for a few years now and I just absolutely love it it's it's worked flawlessly so anyways there's that's all there is to it so thanks for watching guys and uh, I gotta go get my dog he's wandering off he can't he can't see me so uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to if you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe and hit the bell so you'll get notifications whenever I've uploaded a new video we'll catch you later